Hey, we're going to be covering chapter 2.1, Represent Relations and Functions. The chapter begins with a definition of relations, which are a pairing of input values with output values. So these can be seen in this table here with the input values and the output values. Specifically, these are the domain and range. And you probably know this already, but the domain we know as the input, I just said that, and the range is the output. Therefore, the domain and range are also known as the x values and the y values. So next, we can see that each of these values can become an ordered pair. So negative 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, 0, 1, and 3, 1, which can then be graphed. So negative 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, 0, 1, and 3, 1. As we can see, a relation can be represented as both a table and a graph. An ordered pair is a solution of the equation if substituting x and y into the equation produces a true statement. So I'm going to make up an equation for this table because it's not given in the book because this is an example I also made up. But say we have y equals 3x minus 5 and we want to know if, if we use the first ordered pair, negative 2, 2, if that is a solution of the equation. So we are going to use 2 as our y value and negative 2 as our x value. And if we simplify this, we get 2 equals negative 11, which is not a true statement. And therefore, the ordered pair, negative 2, 2, is not a solution of the equation. In this example here, these sets of ordered, this set of ordered pairs, and they want us to identify the domain and range. So remember, this is the x and the y values, so the domain would be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And these are always in order from least to greatest. So these happen to be in the right order, but say we had this ordered pair before this, we would need to make sure that in our list of domain values, we would have negative 3 first before 0. Next for our range values, we have 5. Because each ordered pair has 5 as its y value, we only write it once. The second part of this problem is to graph by plotting points and connecting. So we have negative 3, 5. So negative 3, 5, I'm just going to approximate like I did before. And then negative 2, 5. Negative 1, 5. 0, 5. 1, 5. 2, 5. So if we connect these points, then we just have a horizontal line. So our next word to define is a function, and that is a relation for which each input has exactly one output. If any input of a relation has more than one output, the relation is not a function. So what we take from that is each input has exactly one output. So our next point is we are given this example and we are asked if the following is a function. So based on our definition of a function, we just went over, is the following a function? The answer is yes. Each input has exactly one output. Negative 3 and 2, negative 1 and 3, 2 and 4, and 4 and 4. Even though these both share 4, each has their own output, even if it's the same. Now for the next problem, we see that the other way happens. We have negative 2 and negative 4, 1 to negative 1, but 1 also goes to 2. This is not a function because each input does not have exactly one output. So how else do we know if something is a function? We can graph it and use the vertical line test. So based on these two graphs, are they a function? Well, let's see. So we take a vertical line, let's say we have a line in red, and if we draw a line through the graph, how many points does it go through? This only goes through one point here. So therefore, yes, it is a function. Let's go to our next example and draw another vertical line through. This time it goes through two points, and therefore is not a function. At this point, the book reminds you that a graph is the set of all points. So 
if we had the points from before, for example, and I think it was 1, negative 4, and 1, I don't remember, but let's say 1 also had the point of 2, and we can see when we graph these, so 1, negative 4, 1, negative 4, and 1, 2, these are on a vertical line, and therefore they are not a function. So this can tie back into our other concept. So our next main point is linear functions, and that is defined by the book as a form of y equals mx plus b, where m and b are constants. So we could have y equals negative 2x minus 1. We could have y equals 5 over 4x plus 3 any form of y equals mx plus b. This is called xy notation, and this is another form called function notation. So we read this as f of x equals mx plus b, where f of x takes the place of y. Typically, the range consists of all values of f of x in which x is the domain of f. So x is the domain of f. You may remember this is the x and y value, so it makes sense in that way too. In this final area of the section, we will be using what we've learned in the other sections to evaluate functions, remembering that y equals mx plus b as the form of our base linear function. So, as one of our problems we have, is f of x equal to negative x squared minus 2x plus 7 linear? The correct answer is no, because we have negative x squared, which makes the quadratic, the equation quadratic versus linear. If it were just an x, then yes, it would be a linear equation. So the answer to the question is no. Moving to our other equation, we have is g of x equal to negative, equal to, excuse me, 5x plus 8? And yes, because this matches the y equals mx plus b form with 5 and 8 as our constants. So 5 and 8, yes, this is a linear function.